G'day, it's Rob here again. Well, we're pushing on with a little shear line. And in the last video you saw I finished off the base. Not happy with that. That's the end of that part of the job. Now, I did point out that it was noisy. The lathe was noisy. And uh, I had a few people suggest, you know, oh, your pulleys aren't lined up and a few things. Well, oh, yeah, no, they are actually lined up. That's all fine. The motor sags down a bit on this. This has got to be addressed. I've got to square that up. But the actual noise is in, is in the headstock spindle uh, bearings. You can hear that. The motor's good. But this one is... Yep. So they're running a bit on the dry side, I would think. So the next job is now to take out the, the spindle and have a look at them. Now... The early model shear lines uh, appear to run a different type of bearing to the later ones, and I'll show you what I mean. So here's a schematic of the original shear line uh, lathe. Yeah, interesting, they call it 3.5 inch. It's marked 3 inch. So that's a bit of an uh, interesting point, but that's the model anyway. So this gives a breakdown of how it's constructed and what you're up against gives you all the component parts and uh, looking at this um, down here the bearings for the spindle are this is the CBC E19 now CBC is Consolidate Bearing Company E19 is Magneto Bearing um, CBC are where I'll get replacements from if I need them, but an E19 is a magneto bearing. It's an open-sided bearing, uh, from what I can remember. Uh, I mean, I've worked on magnetos a bit over the years, and pretty sure that's open-sided. It may be one piece, it may not. It might actually disassemble the centre out. We'll have to see anyway. Some do, some don't. Now, the later shear lines use sealed bearing. Uh, they have... Um, covers on each side of them, probably steel I would think. Uh, it's a 6004 double Z, the C3 is the um, uh, level of uh, accuracy. ABEX3 is probably a brand. I got that off the, in off the internet. So, yeah, uh, it looks like these bearings can probably be re-greased provided they're serviceable. They sound like they're dry, they're not notchy. Um, they might be quite serviceable, it's just a matter of you won't know if you pull them, up, pull them out, check over the races with a uh, you know, magnifying glass or an eye loop and see what we're dealing with. But either way, if they're shot, well new bearings would probably be 50 bucks a pair, 50 to 60 dollars for two. I've replaced these sort of bearings before and um, I'm not really surprised that they are noisy because uh, my wall down to tool post grinder which is basically the same era the, some of the bearings on that weren't very good I had to replace some of those and I put in some NSKs so almost certainly the bearings that I would get would probably be NSKs and you get them from CPC alright so now it's a matter of take the headstock apart uh, luckily the, the swivel part just lifts off and that we can leave the actual the bottom bit there and work on it. Now these uh, little many points here on this motor, I think are a bit worn. I'll have to address that later. Get rid of the bit of the sag it's got in it. It's not worrying the belt alignment. Uh, I mean, you know, the belts are quite flexible, but it is, you know, not as nice looking as it could be. Being this left hand is for the camera. <laughs> Things I do for YouTube. Okay. So yeah, you can see. He's got these two mounting points and these 
aluminium bases on these look like they're distorted, they've been pulled up tight. I did put a washer on to try and square it that way, but that didn't seem to work, so I'll have to have a good look. I might even have to rework some new ones or something. We'll see how we go. Right, now we take off the little arm. I, <clears throat> I use Vegemite uh, lids uh, for the Vegemite jars. So good little trays just to put your few little bits in. You know, and being bright yellow, the stuff stands out quite nicely. So there's a tip for you. It doesn't have to be Vegemite, it could be anything, but we've got to have our Vegemite. Okay, now the next thing to do is get this pulley off. Mm -hmm. Some more Allen key required. And luckily the Allen keys all came with this. Uh, this little one here. Either one. It is. Yes, it is. Right. Right. So this is where you use a little cheetah bar. Uh, save your fingers. You've got to go in deep. Uh, that's where these are really handy. These things I did show in an early video a long way back. To how you can make you know make one of these up. They're super good, and you can just. Unlock. Yeah. Saves your fingers. Okay. Now, if she come off, if she tight. If she's tight. Hmm. I thought that might be the case. Not sure, we've got this back enough. Now being aluminium, it doesn't want to come off easily. You got to be very careful using, can't use, well, using pullers on this very, here's the grab screw, it came right out. No, I'll just put it back in for now so we don't lose it. Just a bit. Yeah, you can't really use pullers on aluminium very easily, not without end screws. You can see this has got a chip in already. So what we'll do is we'll use coefficient of expansion and we'll heat up the uh, aluminium with a hairdryer and uh, hopefully that'll let it expand away from the spindle enough that it'll loosen it and come off. So that's the plan. This is an old hair dryer I got off the side of the road, junk day, and it's, it's good for heating up, you know, it's drying stuff. It's, they're handy, they're quite, quite powerful. I need some gloves now. Okay, obviously you don't want to burn yourself. So put some gloves on. <laughs> well, there's always a, a hole. You're going to burn yourself anyway. I'll get another pair of these, they're not very good. Uh, the other pair are even worse, so uh, we'll have to go with these. Just watch it up. Get a burn. Alright, give it a go.
that's all it takes. So, there's a good trick for you. Always use the coefficient of expansion to your advantage. And this is exactly the same thing as you would do when you fit cast iron uh, similar lines in a motorcycle. Uh, similar as I've done plenty of that over the years. And yeah, no, no fuss, you see. We'll probably use the same trick to take the bearings out if they're tight. Just a hair dryer will do it. You could put it in your oven and just heat it up as long as you don't go hot, you know, too hot and burn the paint. You have to keep the temperature down uh, to a reasonable level. But So there you go. It's actually not that, not that bad, heat-wise. Alright. So now we can see there is block nut, that's your preload adjustment there, so now I've got to get some spanners to to loosen those. I'll lift the chuck on for now because it gives you some leverage. And the last thing to do is take that off. You may not even have to take the chuck off, we'll see. Uh, we can always take that off later. Clamping the spindle in a um, in a set of aluminium jaws. But uh, yeah, you can hear those bearings. Actually not, they're not notched, they're perfectly smooth. I felt those originally. I think they're just dry, and they might be alright. Alright, well I've got the spanner. And I was going to use the Allen key in the chat to pull against the lock nut, but it's too tight, the chuck's come loose. So I'm going to have to take the, take the chuck off take the pivoting part of the headstock off, clamp the spindle in a set of soft jaws in the vise, aluminium jaws, and undo it that way. I don't think I've got a spanner that thin that I can get in there. That's uh, very narrow. I have got some narrow ones, but I've got my doubts, so I think that plan will be to clamp on the spindle end, which Shouldn't worry it if you use some V-blocks, aluminium V-blocks. Right. So we'll take the chuck off for now. Right. This is where using a key makes it easy. It saves putting a load on those little Tommy bars. And uh, we're going to be all right that way. Here's my shim, and then when you put these back, if, if you want to keep them centred, because there is a bit of movement, uh, because you've got a space at the back of the thread, try and hold it centred when you do it up, just put a little smear of grease on it, and that'll just keep it in position, and uh, that'll solve that little issue. Okay, so the next thing is going to be to take this off. Okay, little Tommy bar. These are very, very handy. Now, yeah, bear in mind, I've never, never worked on this gadget before. So here we go. Off she comes. How easy is that? So this just uh, pulls up onto a locking pin as a centre section. The wedge is, I presume, to keep it in position and you could possibly use that to give some vertical adjustment up and down I should imagine um, if say there was some problem with the alignment vertically I should say if you uh, use a little shim or you could uh, use that wedge to tilt the head slightly hmm interesting Keep all your screws in position so they don't lose them. Now we can work on this, so I'll get this off the bench and yeah. Get on with the job. Oh yeah, I see that wedge has got a very slight taper in it, so that's what it's there for to basically yeah lock in and also give you some vertical adjustment. Hmm, interesting. So now, uh, I must stress that you've got to be careful you don't mark your 
you know, nice piece of lathe material, of a, your lathe component. So to avoid that, I've got out one of my best work t-shirts, as you can see. Uh, it's a work t-shirt, it's not a going out t-shirt. I mean, it's just a little bit, it's not quite good enough for going out. And uh, yeah, now we can safely put our pride and joy on here without marking it. Okay, what are we dealing with? Well, it's exactly what I thought it would be. I'll come in close and we'll talk about it. Right, well this is a uh, an open caged bearing, magneto bearing as I thought it would be with that prefix. And uh, there's grease in there. I wouldn't say there's much and it looks a bit old. So I would say that probably the one up the other end is the dry one. And that's where all the real work's going. So what do we do now? Well, the problem we've got is that okay, I can I can lock this spindle in padded jaws and devices I talked about originally, and I can get it apart. But the problem is then I have to assemble it and hold this adjusting nut in position while I do up the lock nut. Now, obviously, I need a spanner for that. I don't have a spanner for that, so we'll have to make a spanner for that. And it's dead easy. I mean, you just being a you know broad flats on a nut, you don't have to be super precise, you just get some flat steel that will go in there, fit the width of the nut, grind a U-section in it, doesn't matter how pretty it is, doesn't have to be pretty at all, that'll hold the nut and then you can do up the adjuster when you reassemble it. So that's the next job, make up a spanner.